stores our Svelte's way of intercomponent reactivity. So it's really similar to signals, which you may have been hearing a lot about lately, as well as views ref. These are all fantastic patterns, extremely similar patterns. And we're gonna show the Svelte native version of this, which is stores. In this video, we're gonna show how to use the writable store and the derived store and use them throughout your application. This is them working. And then we'll show a couple of the other uses of stores beyond just writable and derived. In this video, we're just giving a toy example, but in the next video, we're going to attach it to the add monsters button so we can create an array of monsters, which is then displayed in the my monsters page. Let's start with some simple code that you probably already know. So here we have our count variable, and then we have our derived property of double count and we can see that we can increase the count and it'll automatically show the double count there. And we can increase it by several methods, which are all equivalent. So this is cool. What if we wanna share count between different components? Well, you could pass it up and down the component tree, so like this, and if the components are you know, parent-child, this is fine. This is what you should do if you only need it in one little part of the component tree. However, once you start passing it all through the component tree, you end up with a mess where a lot of your code is up at the top of the component tree, where it's not really used there. It's used lower in the component tree. So you may think, okay, what about if we take this and put it in a different file, right? And we export it and then we'll just import count from there so this is from lib stores and uh oh so we get some errors it says we're assigning to a constant and let's look at this more specific error you cannot assign count because it is an import so even though this is a let it is not a constant when we're defining it here it turns it into a constant when we import it here. So we cannot change this once it's exported out. So this is where stores start to come in handy. So let's go back and now we'll try it again, but with stores. So first we'll import writable from Svelte store and then we'll let count equal writable and we'll define a writable of zero. And so we'll cross out double count stuff for now and just worry about displaying the count. So count here is object object. And that's because to display the value of the store, you need to put a dollar sign in front of it. Okay, now it's showing the count as zero. And there we go, so that's working. And now let's go ahead and make a button click change. So we could, we'll start off with just one of them. And here, once again, we can just do dollar sign count and it's working like before. And let's go ahead and do that to all of the others. So you can see that we can just add a dollar sign to this store and it works just as if it was a uh, let count equals zero. However, it's not actually the same. So first, see that we can change this into a const and it still works. And that's because the thing that's staying constant is the store itself, while the value on the store changes. And we're accessing the value on the store by doing the dollar sign. So if we wanna get more into how stores work, we can see that we're not actually, well, okay, let's take away this dollar sign. And now let's try const count.set and we will get the value of count plus one. And now this will work. And this is actually what it's doing under the hood when we're doing either of these two or what this one was before. We can also do count.update. And the difference here is that update takes a function. And so the argument of the function is the value of the store, the current value. So we can just do C plus one and this should now work. And so I don't see a whole lot of use for update over set or just plain assigning it, but it's there if you need it. 
Now let's bring back our double count. So the first thing here is that we are getting the writable store, not the actual value. So let's do that and let's see if that works. So that actually does work. There is another way to do it. And we'll show you that in a second once we see this way breaking. And to get that to break, we'll want to move this into our stores. And so we will once again try to import uh, count and we'll import it from store and lib slash store. And here we go. It is working, except not really, because when I reload, it gives us 500 error. And that is because we need to export this. So yes, we make sure to export it. And now this does work. Reloading works fine. There is the issue here of, it says that we're not exporting the type declarations. So let's see if we can fix that. Let's go ahead and restart the server and see if that takes care of it. And yes, it does. Everything is fixed now. And I believe the answer is because when we started our Svelte server last time, we did not have the lib folder or the stores.ts file. And so now that we've restarted again with those files, they're recognized. Okay, cool. So we've done all this work. Why? And it's not just so we can have this one line in a different file. It's so that we can share it between different components. So let's go ahead and go to our layout component. And in our my monsters, we'll just, and this is a little preview of what's going to be happening in the next video. Let's go ahead and just do our count right here. And of course we have to import our count. And here we go. And now it's updating right in line with how it's updating here. So this is very cool. We can have something stored in our lib slash stores. We can update it in counter slash, uh, yeah, our counter route, and then have it show up in the layout. We could also have it show up in any other route. So let's go ahead and do our main page. So we go to page.svelte and we can import our count and let's just go ahead and display the count. And of course it'll be zero right now. We'll put it above all of the generations. We'll do it as the first generation. Uh, there we go. So we've got our zero there and let's go to count her and make it go up. And we'll see that the count here is eight. We could also have a button here. So button and we have our, uh, let's see if copilot can do that for me. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Okay. So we can update it from here as well. And let's go ahead and put our count in. Fantastic. So we've shared our count throughout the app, but can we share our double count throughout the app? We could, of course, just copy this line and use it wherever we want to use double count. And for something this small and this obviously named, you know, maybe that's not so bad. However, I'm sure you can think of a bunch of different examples where you would want to share derived data. You don't only want, you'd only want to drive it once. So let's go ahead and give it a try. So here we run into our first problem. Uh, yeah. How are we going to export this? The thing is, this is not meant to work. This is not meant to be shared outside of the component where it originated unless you're passing it down. So we bring in a new type of store called a derived store. And so now we can export const double count and then we derive it. And this will be very similar to what you might see as computed properties in other frameworks. So you give the store that it depends on and then you have an argument as the, sorry, a function as the second argument. And the first argument to that function is the thing that you're depending on. And then we can return a value that is the derived value. So here we will go ahead and add double count to what we're importing. And now 
it's working just as we expect it. So this markup is a little more verbose than most Svelte markup, but it does its job for sure. I personally would have preferred that we not have to pass in this as an argument because we already have that information there. Why not just do this or this? But this is how it is. Oh, and if you want to drive it based on multiple properties, you'll want to do an array. And then the first argument to this function is also an array. And you may be wondering why an array and not just have it be the second and third and fourth and so on argument. And that's because for drive stores, there's actually more you can do. So you could pass the second argument and the second argument to this function is set. And that will allow you to set it at a later time. So using set timeout or an interval. So we've gone over the writable and derived stores, and that's 90% of the stores you're gonna create, but there are a couple more things you can do. So you can create readable stores, which cannot be set from the outside. And so here, for example, it's showing the updated time. You can also be pulling in data from uh, other APIs. So you can do that as a readable store. You can also have read-only stores. And read-only stores, basically, they make it so that you can take one of your other stores, such as your writable store, but make it so uh, you're not accidentally writing it somewhere. So if you want to have it writable in some places, but readable in others, you can you know, only import the writable one where you need to write it and import the readable one everywhere else. So this should cover a lot of the most common use cases. However, you can make custom stores as well. You just need to make sure to return a subscribe and then it'll act just like a writable store, but you can call custom functions on it like increment, decrement, reset in this example. This is beyond the scope of this video, but we may cover it in a later video if there's interest. So that's all we have for today. Go ahead and join us next time when we're going to be taking concepts we learned here and using it to store monsters that have been caught. We'll catch them on this page and then see them on the My Monsters page. So I'll see you there. And in the meantime, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.